Everybody on the team, we all just vibe with each other. Like, each person has their own unique thing about them. Before Zion Williamson would be called the next LeBron James. I think the comparison thing will never stop. I love everything about him from the outside looking in. I've never met the kid but I love everything about him and he keeps the main thing the main thing and that's the game of basketball. Before he would cover Slam Magazine at 16 years old. Before he would sign with Duke and be the most looked at player probably within the last decade. Before he would be the projected number one pick in the 2019 NBA draft. And before he was shutting down high school gyms across the nation doing things like this. <laughs> Zion's mother named her son after Mount Zion in the Bible, which is considered the highest point in ancient Jerusalem. She said, When I was pregnant, my grandmother kept telling me he's going to be extra special. So when you go look for a name for him, look for something extra special. And flipping through the Bible, Zion caught me. And it seems fitting because Zion is a mountain of a man. At just 18 years old, the kid is 6 foot 7 and weighs 285 pounds, and he's even strong enough to do this with a basketball. At 16, he was the same height and only a few pounds lighter. That same year, Zion covered Slam Magazine and the cover asked, are you ready for Zion Williamson? And while the world might not have been ready for him at the time, I think it's safe to say they are now. Zion grew up with parents who were both former college athletes and had dreams of being the best player in the world from a young age. But he wasn't just a dreamer. He was willing to put in the work, waking up at 5 a.m. every morning at the age of nine to work on his skills. Although he was overlooked early on in his career, after hitting a growth spurt in the ninth grade, there wasn't a single person in the basketball world who was important who didn't make the trip down to see him play live. Famous rappers and athletes started posting pics in his jerseys, but it was one person in particular who came to watch Zion that left a lasting impression. But we'll get into all that good stuff in just a minute. What's going on, good people, in the comments section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy Hecht, here for you on Before They Were Famous, taking you through the life and career of Zion Williamson prior to fame. If you haven't watched some of the newer videos, I'm the LA host for this channel. I'll be doing weekly content to help Michael out, who has an insanely busy schedule. Be sure to tune into Famous News every Monday through Friday to get your daily dose of entertainment updates. We've also done recent profiles on celebs like Future, Ariana Grande, as well as other athletes like Julian Edelman, Juju Smith, and Joel Embiid in the past, so be sure to check those out after you finish watching this video. But in the meantime, in between time, if there are any celebs you want us to do in future episodes or other athletes, let us know in the comment section down below. You can also hit me up on Instagram, link will be down below, and send me your request. But without any more talking, let's get into the video. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Zion Latif Williamson was born on July 6, 2000 in Salisbury, North Carolina to his mother Sharonda Sampson and his father Latif Williamson. Latif is 6 foot 4, 270 pounds and played football as a defensive lineman. He was a high school All-American at Darlington High, later playing at North Carolina State and Livingstone College in the 70s. Sharonda also ran track at Livingstone and regularly cleared the 6 foot mark in the high jump competition. So it's safe to say there was a good chance he would be pretty athletic, but even his mom couldn't have guessed that Zion would have a 46 inch vertical. You know, his stepdad and I were, we were college athletes, so we knew like the hard work it took to get there. After the passing of her mother, Samson moved her family from Greenville to South Carolina. Zion's parents divorced when he was just five years old, and his mom married his new stepfather, Lee Anderson. Lee played college basketball at Clemson in the 70s, but two weeks before going to the NBA camp, he was hit by a car. Zion also has a little brother, Noah, who is absolutely adorable. Me and Noah, uh, Noah's my little brother. I'm always look out for him. Noah just has that swag about him. I, I, I love it because I say, yeah, that's my little brother. What's up, bro? <laughs> just before his freshman year, Samson enrolled Zion in Salisbury Day School, which is a college prep school where each student is required to play at least one sport from grades 7 to 12. And by high school, it became a pretty easy choice for Zion. But prior to taking over the court, he actually played soccer and football as a quarterback. When he was five years old though, he dreamt of one day becoming a college basketball star. He told his mom and stepfather at five that he was eventually gonna go to college and be the number one player in the country. And he had the work ethic to make those dreams come true, so he got to work. 
His stepdad taught him some point guard skills and he became the only five-year-old on the nine-year-old Sumter Falcons AAU team. He started training as a guard and learned how to shoot and handle the ball on that team. At the age of nine, he knew he wanted to be in the NBA one day, so he would wake up at 5 a.m. every morning to train. When I was nine years old, I had similar dreams. I was a hockey goalie and like Zion, I dreamed of one day making it to the league. In fact, the only thing I was worried about was that I would win an NHL championship and wouldn't be able to lift up the Stanley Cup. I know, that was my only worry. Not making it to the league, not making the finals, just not being strong enough physically as a grown man to lift up the championship trophy. But as you can see, one of our original dreams worked out better than the other one. And now I don't have to lift a single thing to talk to you guys, so it all worked out. According to Jalik Felton, one of Zion's roommates at the Elite 24 basketball camp, Zion couldn't dunk or shoot very well in the sixth grade. Zion's mother coached his team in middle school where she was also a teacher. He was scoring 20 points per game that year and she said he was a pass first point guard. If he was open, he'd take the shot, but he liked to make plays. It was in seventh grade that he dropped his other two sports of soccer and football and began focusing solely on hooping. In terms of basketball influences, Zion never had a favorite team, but he was a big fan of Carmelo on the Knicks and of course the tenacity of Russell Westbrook. But it wasn't the same chosen one story that LeBron James had growing up. Although it would be hard not to notice Zion's stature now, he wasn't always that big and he wasn't nationally recognized until high school. At first, kids at their school wouldn't even show up to the game since it was mostly recognized as an academic school. In fact, you couldn't even get turned down from playing any of the sports for lack of ability at their school if you wanted to play. Even if I was the worst basketball player ever, I would have joined the team just to say I was teammates with the GOAT. Well, future GOAT. Zion says in ninth grade that he was 5'8 and really skinny, so he was playing point guard. But after he fell and broke his wrist during the game in his freshman year, an x-ray from the doctor showed that Zion had a growth plate open. And the doctor projected that he could grow up to five inches. And sure enough, from 9th to 11th grade, he went from being 5'8 to 6'7 and from weighing 175 pounds to 240. He dunked for the first time that year and after his growth spurt, well, he only elevated. I didn't know weight could make you jump higher. <laughs> his high school coach, Lee Sarter, said while Zion was in 10th grade, there weren't too many people around a year ago. People like to say they were, but trust me, they weren't. They should have been, but they weren't. Zion is the best basketball player I've ever coached. Even colleges were slow to catch on to the talents of a young Zion. Early on, he only had offers from in-state schools. But after that growth spurt, he gained a lot more confidence in himself as a player. And with that newfound confidence came 40-point games, state championships, and absolutely insane, insane in-game dunks. People started posting up highlight tapes that would receive millions of views on YouTube, and his parents started to believe in his five-year-old dreams even more. His mom told the Charlotte Observer, when you have elderly people come to watch and they don't know who you are, but they're saying this boy will be special and we'll see him on TV, you start to think there may be something to this. In high school, to avoid letting the early fame get too much to his head, his mom would take away his cell phone at 10 p.m. She allowed Zion to watch his highlight videotapes twice, once when each was first posted and once when he was having a bad day but she said that he always remained humble through it all. Even the Washington Post wrote an article with the headline saying, this 16 year old dunker is so dominant, it's hard to tell if he's actually good at basketball. Well, a couple of years later, I have an answer for you, Washington Post. Yes, very good. I need you to dunk the ball, yell, scream, something. Let them other boys know why they shouldn't like jump with you. Why did you have second thoughts of even like thinking about trying to guard you? But Zion didn't want to just become known for his dunking abilities. In an interview, he said, If you see me play, you know that's just one part of my game. I'm on my LeBron thing now. I'm only an in-game dunker. I'm focused on helping my team win. I want that to be my only focus. And don't get it twisted. Zion is far from just being a dunker. The kid can shoot too. His team won the NBPA 100 Camp Championship and shortly afterwards, he tweeted this back in 2016. And let me tell you, the world was in for a shock. And the world started watching. At 16, Zion had a follow on Instagram from Drake after he posted a pic sporting a Zion High School jersey. Aubrey's always watching and seems to have an eye for talent. And you're like, 
go check Twitter or go check Instagram. Look what Drake just posted. And I saw that he had my jersey on and I had just sent him an IG message saying, thanks for showing me so much love. Drake wasn't the only one to show support through the gram. Odell Beckham Jr. was repping a Zion jersey in a pic, Des Bryant DM'd him, Nate Robinson, Dwight Howard, and more all reached out to the kid. After a 53 point game in high school, over 200 people waited in line just to meet the young star, and half of those people were fully grown adults. The police had to shut down the line even though Zion was more than happy to wait around and shake all the hands and kiss all the babies. Coaches started to come and see the kid work out too. The team would set up chairs 10 minutes before practice so that nightly spectators could watch their hour long workouts. That's a lot of pressure to perform every single practice. If someone watched me record these videos during my practice runs, I don't know how well I would do first and I also don't know how exciting it would be to watch. Although, when you can do these types of dunks in practice, I would probably pay to come watch the kid also. That year he received 36 scholarship offers from all of the top schools. He was even offered a football scholarship to play tight end at LSU, despite putting down the pigskin years earlier. One of the coaches who watched him play was none other than legendary coach from Duke University, Coach K. He met with Zion and his parents for an hour before practice to talk about their program and feel out Zion's personality. Zion quickly became a consensus five-star recruit and was ranked among the top five players in the 2018 class after leading his team to three straight state championships, which were also the school's first three championships in their history. He was even given the prestigious award of South Carolina Mr. Basketball, which recognizes the top senior boys high school basketball player in the state. Previous winners of the award include Ray Allen and Jermaine O'Neal. He became a McDonald's High School All-American, runner-up for Mr. Basketball USA, and USA Today All-USA First Team honoree. According to his mom, even with all the attention, he would rather be at home playing video games or watching Netflix than going out all the time. Him and his mom love to watch Naruto together. Um, I'm gonna thank my parents for that. Um, they always tell me never forget where I came from. I always remember that the moment uh, I let the fame get to me, uh, it's all downhill from there. I guess Coach K's meeting inspired Zion because in September of 2018, he began his freshman year as a Duke Blue Devil where he's averaging 21, eight and two and has already managed to break Duke's vertical leap record. In fact, he jumped so high that his number couldn't even be recorded at first. Second jump, he goes and clears it again. Zion said he chose Duke because Duke stood out because the brotherhood represents a family. Coach K, he's just the most legendary coach to ever coach basketball. My little brother Brendan is a huge Duke fan, so I know he was pretty pumped about the signing and I think he's just hoping that they don't choke in the playoffs again like they have in recent years. Shout out to you, Brendan. Most recently, Zion's shoe broke mid-game after fans paid thousands of dollars to see the next big NBA star. Zion left a minute into the game and never came back. If anything, maybe that should show that the kid should be getting paid. If people are paying thousands of dollars to see one player, let Zion take home some money. But at least we know money will be no problem for Zion in the coming year because according to SB Nation, Zion's NBA rookie contract could be worth about 40 million over four years, but it's his shoe deal that could be worth potentially $100 million according to TMZ. As for the future, I know Knicks fans are getting excited about the possibility of having Zion play for them in the garden. He even said in an interview once, the New York environment, there's nothing like it. But I guess we'll have to wait and see because this is before they were famous. We've covered other athletes on this channel as well as tons of celebs. We do daily bio videos on this channel, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. As always, I'm Jeremy Hecht here for you on Before They Were Famous. Dream good, live better. I hope you have one heck of a day. Follow me on Instagram, link is below, and I'll see you in the next video.